Hello. I watch a lot of media and it feels as though I'm always looking for something. It's like the miner who's in the mountain and he's, he's looking for the glimpse that shows you where the gold is. And most of the media I watch is, is good, intelligent in some manner, and creative. And it stimulates the mind. It stimulates how we function. Imagine if there was no media, if there was no stories, no books, no movies, no radio, no internet. How would you live your life? How much more attention would you place on your own ability to communicate? And your own listening to your fellow human beings? Because the mind compares things. And when we compare ourselves to all of these images and symbols and incredible stories, at the end of the day, our lives can seem quite mundane, quite boring, quite meaningless. Because thousands of lives are not dependent upon us. No one knows what we're doing. No one cares. Does it matter what my neighbor does? Does it matter what they have to eat? Does it matter what worries them? I don't know my neighbor. And in the big cities that I've lived, most of the time, I have not known my neighbor. And I have not wanted to. They were just one of many people that would pass me during the day that meant nothing to me. And when I was a child, it was different. You live in a street where you know most of the people in the houses, or you know about them. You play in the street, or we once did. And the world was a much different place. Playing in the park, riding your bike, doing anything and everything <clears throat> that a child does with full vigor, with full attention, with full excitement. And now as I reach the not quite end of my zenith, but closer and seeing the end, I have to say that media and stories has consumed me my entire life. And within these stories, I've imagined for myself playing a part or a character that is a hero in some way and, and does something useful, does something good for the whole species and is known for it. I've always wanted to do something great. And so I spent most of my life searching or seeking this greatness. And when I found out about it, when I truly found out about it, can't stay as an I, it can't stay as a me. It's an us. It's a we. But we spend or I spend so much time alone. That that was a hard thing to come to terms with. Some part of me wanted the recognition. 
part of wanting to be seen as being great is you get the distinction, you get the recognition. But what I found was greatness is a much different thing that I started out to think about. I was looking at the recognition of one's peers. I wasn't looking at what it means to be truly great. I think sacrifice has to be put in there at the top of the list. Where to truly be great, you have to sacrifice yourself for the whole. You have to give yourself up so that the betterment of others is more important than the betterment of yourself. And these others might be people you don't even know. And so how do you strive to help others if you're not helping yourself first? And that's always been a problem for me. I've been trying to do something by myself and hoping others would join in. And they might in their own way, but not in the way that I had imagined or needed or what I thought would succeed. And so over time, I, I grew mournful. And it changed my demeanor, it changed who I was. And I lost my spark. I lost my inspiration. I lost my excitement. I lost most things. But slowly along the way, you gain something. And it may just be an understanding that you are not alone, that there are other levels of intelligence that perhaps at times pay attention to us, lowly human beings. And perhaps there is help from beyond or within, or above. But to get it, you have to get real still, real quiet. And you get so quiet that you start to see, you see differently because the voices or the voice or the constant barrage in your mind stops. The judging machine stops. And in that silence, resides a presence that you can only become aware of if you quiet your mind. And breathing has much to do with it and awareness. And having desire but losing desire having desire, but losing desire. And it's in these moments of stillness that you lose 
perspective at the small self level. You're just a pinpoint in a dark void of nothing. Connected to nothing. Just part of the blackness, part of the void. And you have to get over your fear of that. Because when I was first in it, I was horrified to feel no desire, to want nothing, just to be there. But I thought it was at the basis of rock bottom that I was trapped in some place that was the worst type of existence. And so the mind was interpreting it And it took a long time for the mind to calm down and for whatever I am to get a sense of what was happening. I had to change my interpretation into a positive one. that meditating for six hours in darkness was okay. Not only okay, but preferred. No human contact, desiring no human contact, just floating in emptiness. There's no bothers. There's no worries, no stress. And when you get there, and you know how to get there. Life changes because you have a place you would rather be than in normal life. And you start to choose that place. And in fact, it becomes a hiding spot. It becomes a place to hide from the world. But it gives you something to compare with the world and creates a reference point for you to be in the presence of the Almighty, the presence of something more, the presence of something less, the presence. And I said something about being able to see differently. But that's up for you to find out about. If you've never meditated over an hour in your life, enjoyably, I might suggest that it's a uh, time to learn how to do so. Stop the stimulation. Stop the grasping. and learn that it's okay 
to be with nothing, to have nothing, to want nothing, just for a little bit of time per day, to show you, to give awareness to what you are doing during your day when you're not there and have more awareness around your breathing, your presence, how you treat the people you're around, how you listen, how you talk, what you believe in, what you support. Because there's so much attention on stories that have no relevance to true reality. And the more we place our mind and our attention there, the more we get trapped in believing things that aren't true and participating in larger movements that are not good for us or for our species. I love you. And I want you to realize your highest potential. I know that sounds a little odd in terms of how to end this, but deep down, I think if every human wanted every other human they came in contact with to reach their highest potential, we'd have a much different world. See ya.